Hi guys, Kay here. It's Q&A day. I have no topic planned for today. It's going to be questions brought by the group. So who knows where it's going to go? Stay with us. Okay, you start, Jean, and then we'll go to Marie. Okay. So um, I've, I've learned for myself that, you know, we have our spirit guides that are meant to help us uh, in the work that we do. And then you have another type of spirit guide that basically is one that's more like your guardian and your and talks to you and and you know kind of which is that connection I guess with the with uh, our intuition our soul connection. So I you know I know that um, I've heard that some people relate their spirit guides to this other guide that we have or angel or or whoever it is that is or holy spirit that guides us you know in the directions that we should go or that we hear and so um i just i you know it's one of those questions that people have because even um i've heard some mediums say that oh no that's my spirit guides that are telling me what to do but i feel like they they all have their own job and their spirit guides for me i didn't feel like they're the ones that are telling me you know like if i'm asking in or if i hear or intuitively who is it that's speaking to me about me right. you know so i kind of throw that out there okay so let me just um i'm going to start at the end yeah, and then, and then we can work back. It's my belief that the majority of the time, that little voice we hear in the head is is our soul. Mm -hmm. That's our higher spirit. It's not our guides telling us. It's not our guides telling us the evidence. That's that's all coming from our own spirit, our higher self, whatever you want to call it, your soul, whatever. It that's where I believe that's all coming from. So, um, but it feels like someone else is talking to us. And so we just say it's our guides. And I, it, I believe it's coming from, from within. Then there's that. Uh, I do believe that we have guides. We have mul I believe we can have multiple guides. I think some people may only have one guide or two guides because that's really all they need. But then there are others that may have lots of guide, uh, several guides. And I believe the guides do play an important role, but you have your, what I call the main guide, guardian angel, whatever you want to call them, that is with you from the moment you take your first breath until you take your last breath. And that's the person that is with you every step of the way. They are guiding you. They're watching over you. They're, you know, celebrating with you shaking their head going at times they have no judgment they do it in fun they, they have no judgment they they know we're human and they know that we're going to make mistakes and they know that will the human aspect of us comes into play and they they understand that and they get it they are nothing but supportive no matter what our choices are in life they are always supportive and try to help us to get on the right track if we've gotten off of it that's your main guide always with you and they'll see you through they help you make the transition to earth they help you with the transition back to the spirit world and they will stay with you in the spirit world for as long as you need them and help you make that transition they won't leave you until they are confident that you're ready to be in the spirit world on your own. Okay, so there's that guide. And that guy, that guide can play many different roles. I mean, can they help you with your mediumship? Of course they can. Can they help you if you're an artist? Uh -huh. They can. They can help you with a they have many um they're they're like a parent. They juggle a lot. <laughs> they can do many things. 
then you will have those guides that will come in and work with you for specific things that you are working on or going through in your lifetime. Okay. Um, if you're an artist, you might have a special guide that comes in and works with you with your art. Healers will have healing guides, probably multiple healing guides. So you'll, you'll have just a wide variety. So you'll have guides that will come and go. Your main guides never leaves. It's always with you. Or it's always at your beck and call. Other guides come and go. Then you have helpers. Helpers can be lots of different people. Could be, um, I'll use Chelsea as an example. Chelsea is being a helper right now to help solve her um, missing person case. She's serving as a helper from the spirit world. So you all have helpers who will come in. My mom and my dad and my grandmother and my grandfather have been helpers throughout my whole journey of learning mediumship. They're always there whenever I'm giving a reading in a practice session or a student is giving me a reading. They're always there ready to help. They're helpers in that way. So, you know, your loved ones, friends, family, ancestors, recent ancestors that have not been in the spirit world long can serve as your helpers and often do your main guide it's my belief that your main guide has been in the spirit world for a long time and they have their soul has progressed to a specific level in the spirit world to a, a specific um plane if you will so they've gone through a lot of training, a lot of training on how to become a spirit guide. They have done a lot of their own soul work from their last journey to earth. I mean, they've done a lot of work on themselves. They've done a lot of studying and they've done a lot of training. So they're, they're not somebody who's, just recently passed in the last hundred years. They've been in the spirit world longer than that. So that's your main guide. So, um, yeah, did that answer your question? Yeah, it did. It did. And it, it was very much what I cons you know, was thinking anyway, you, but yeah. I wanted to get your take on it and, um, yeah. you know, just have clarity and you know, so did anyone else believe this, you know, as yeah. well? But because it's like even with um I know my father, um, he's helping me. And right. you know, but in one particular thing though, because yeah. I had had a reading that he was gonna help me write a book. And yeah. so, you know, I just started on it. And so every time I sit down in yeah, front of the is. computer. And I'm yep. like, okay, okay, dad, I'm stuck. What am I supposed to write? You know, so and then mm -hmm. it just starts to flow. Yeah. So, so yeah. I know he's not my God, but he is my helper. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And so, um, you know, like my, my main guide uh, is, is a, an ancestor, but from way back, <laughs> way, way, way back. And he helps me with a lot of things. He helps me. Uh, he inspired. He does inspired speaking for me. Um, helps me. He does help me with my mediumship. He also helps me with uh, philosophy because I love philosophy, and he's a a man of wisdom for sure. And so he helps me in those areas as well. Um, I. I've just recently, like in the last couple of days, <laughs> have um, been introduced to a new guide. And um, it's really interesting because my main guide always takes me to a certain place. This guy takes me to a planet, which is completely different than anything else any of my other guides have done. I always go to a planet and we're sitting on a planet. 
He looks like Moses. He is not Moses. <laughs> not Moses, but he's got that kind of attire on. And then he's got a long beard and he's a man of wisdom. Um, but he told me to call him Alfred. <laughs> so he's not Moses. <laughs> But um, I'm learning, I'm now sitting with him when I go into the power just to sit, he sits with me and he's gonna be a teacher. So he's gonna be one of my teachers. Yeah, so yeah, they're always changing. They come, they go, they leave, they come back sometimes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this one's new though. This one's very new. Marie. Is it Marie or Marie? Marie. Mary. It's the same. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Um, you were talking earlier. Br briefly, you mentioned um, psychic detective or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, last week, you talked about sometimes uh, you have a spirit that was a an abuser or a, a criminal or a, well. and um, I've been in touch with a few spirits like that and I know it's temporary the contact the connection I mean and but it's still very uncomfortable for me and I'm a retired criminologist I was used to work with criminals I was comfortable with them Yes. But it's like, oh no! <laughs> if, if then not, you can't escape again. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and it's not the same thing being, even if the spirit is in the light now. Just when he's showing you how he was thinking or his personality was and all that, uh, it's not the same being like inside of him than being outside of him as a human being when they were in front of me. So I want to be less fussy and not block them and um, be, be more open to them. Um, I, I know I'm safe. I'm not worried about safety. Uh, it's just how to make the connection more comfortable for me or to accept it more easily. Um, you, you know, because of your background, you're probably gonna get them <laughs> I know. <laughs> you're probably gonna get them often. Um, but, you know, actually, that could be a beautiful thing because you could help them on their journey for healing and forgiving themselves because there will be a lot of uh, forgiveness that they're going to have to do on their own part in the spirit world. So it could be a beautiful thing in a way. Just perhaps maybe just, um, just think of them as sitting across from you. It's the same as when they're sitting across from you, your energy is m moving into theirs and you're picking up things, I'm sure, when you're working with them on an intuitive level anyway. It's really no different from the spirit world. The only difference is, is they're no longer living. They no okay. longer have the human body, but you are still connecting to them on a soul to soul level. So in the living you connect soul to soul and when when they when a person passes the body stays behind but the soul moves up and you're still connecting soul to soul so you're still connecting in the same way as you did when they were living in a way i thank you because i never um, I, I, I felt stuck. And as soon as you said it's for their own healing and uh, see them sitting in front of you, oh, man, we, that's, that makes it, it's very simple. Or sitting beside it, you. It yeah. helps me clearly to, um, yep. to make the, the difference between, I don't know what I was thinking or because maybe because the feeling were stronger 
uh, I was uh, more, um, I felt more vulnerable or. Um, well, when you when you blend with them purposely, mm. as you know, when you're blending with them with the spirit world, you are purposely blending. So it would make sense that they're coming closer to you on that blending, energetically in the blending. So you're going to be able to pick up a little bit more than if you were just chatting with them from across the table. You're not purposely, I'm assuming, you're not purposely trying to link in with them on a psychic level. But because you are um, intuitive and empath, your energy is going to go out and, and be able to feel their energy, whether you choose to or not, it's going to, it's going to happen. Mm. So you're still going to be able to feel them and pick up on things, but maybe not to the degree that if you purposely blend with them, it may feel a bit stronger. Mm -hmm. You might get more details. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Good, Good question. Uh, hello. Hello. Um, the question is, um, and uh, when I refer to you and the question, I don't mean UK, I mean any teacher, right? Right. So, okay, so it is, is it possible that there is one guide shared between a teacher and a student? So, for example, I have my own guide and you are my teacher and you have your own guides. And I come to learn with you and you tell me, I will give you my, my guide so that he works with you. Is it possible? And if yes, how this happens? Um, it's, uh, it's not that you're giving me your guide. It's just that your guide is making themselves available. If that makes sense. So, for example, if um, um, I gave a... a if I give a reading to someone who's uh, more on the lines of a soul path, spiritual, their spiritual journey, I'm going to invite the guides to come in and work with me. So it's not that I'm taking their guide. I'm just, they're just making themselves available to me so that I can communicate with them about my client. Does that make sense? No, I, sorry, I don't no. mean this. I mean that your guide, for example, comes to me and teaches me the same way he teaches you. I'm not sure if the main guide would be a guide for multiple people, but another kind of guide that comes and goes could very well be working with multiple people. Um, because it's, I mean, they can be communicating with me and working with me and working with somebody else at the same time. We, we know that. And we know that spirit communicators can do that. So if spirit communicators can do that, surely guides can do it because they're more knowledgeable about the spirit world and how it all works. So surely, right? Okay, so um, the... The following question is, when two mediums are doing double viewing. Double what? Double viewing. Double viewing, like a double link? Yes, double link. Yes. Okay, so. What is a double link? So that's, I'll explain how I see it. And Monto, you can tell me if I'm describing what you're referring to. Uh, a double link is, uh, let's say Gina and I decide that we're going to work together side by side and we're going to bring through somebody for Wendy. And yes. we bring through Wendy's father and I'm bringing in evidence about Wendy's father. And then Jean will bring in some and then I'll bring some and Jean and we bounce. Yes. Yeah, we bounce back and forth like that. That's a double link. Okay, so they are, uh, they are, um, I have done this once, all right, and uh, I have seen something, 
other than the other guide have seen. So I was describing, for example, her kitchen and the other one was describing her bedroom and I was describing their marriage and yep. the other one was describing her death. Yep. But I didn't see what she was seeing and I don't know if she can see what I'm seeing or not because uh, I was in- both, It can go both ways. Can go both ways. It can go both ways, absolutely. So, um, you, you, and that shows the intelligence of the spirit world. and. And it also shows you that in the spirit world, they can communicate with multiple people at the same time. And it doesn't have to be the same communication. So you, she's, you know, let's say you have, um, we'll pick on Wendy today. We, you and I both have Wendy's dad. I'm talking about Wendy's dad and all the work that he did. And you're, you're talking about the things that Wendy like, Wendy's dad liked to do for fun. That's, mm -hmm. that's perfectly fine. And I may not pick up anything that you say. And I might. I might, though. I'm mm -hmm. not going to repeat it because you've already said it. Mm -hmm. So I'll just, you know, as you're talking, I'll be going, oh, honey, yep. uh -huh, I just got that. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But I'm not going to say anything. All right. So, yeah, it can go both ways. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. And it can be even with more than two. I mean, I, I remember times where uh, we were doing this in, in my mentorships and there would be like 10 or 15 of us sitting in chairs up at the front and we'd all be bringing through the same person. Ooh. Yeah, which was fun. It was really <laughs> fun. I like doing that kind of stuff. <laughs> And you had to give, and, and so we weren't allowed to repeat any of the same information. You had to have something different, but the spirit mm -hmm. communicator was able to keep up with us with no problem. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Good. I'm having difficulty reconciling two disparate thoughts that I have. It's my understanding, and for now I accept that we come in. Um, to our incarnation and our soul has previously agreed as to what our life lessons are meant to be. They've chosen the family, um, maybe not the exact particulars of the experience for the learning, but there is an agenda as to what you will experience. Okay. So mm -hmm. if we accept that as a premise and we experience some very strained relationships, which we'll, we would then have to accept it was meant to be. This is all part of the learning. Right. The people with whom you may have had a difficult relationship, if they are brought back by a medium, what I don't understand is why they would apologize. Because why would they apologize if that had been the agreement all along and they were merely fulfilling the role that you had agreed to? Right. I, I would just, I'm, you know, putting two and two together here. So I, I know that in the spirit world, I do believe we go through what we call here the life review, where we take a look at the life that we lived and we see where we, you know, we see everything, right? And when, when you have to go through and you see, they see the pain that they've we see whoever we are in the spirit world we will see the pain that we've put others through especially others that we um uh cared about and we'll see that pain and we have to live it and feel it so on a, in that journey of that progression of the soul as as they are healing coming back to say, I am so sorry, may be part of their process for them to heal. 
but it's also a part of them of, oh my God, I now know what I did. And I am so sorry that I did that to you because they feel it. They felt it. They know it from a human standpoint, not a soul standpoint. They can feel it. Does that make sense? I do understand what you're saying. I, I, I'm not sure it's, it's answering the difficulty that I have, though. It, not trying to be personal, but I had a very difficult relationship with my mother. Mm -hmm. She is now in the spirit world, and I have been told on several occasions she has come and apologized. So I sit with that and I try to understand if I accept the premise that that was her job. She has, I had agreed to experience what we experienced as difficult as it was. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's like the greatest gift of love in a perverse way for her to have fulfilled that terrible role. True, but from but I from the know. yeah, I I understand what you're saying, and Jean's probably wanting to chime in here too, so she can give us the ministers as a um, side of that. But there is there is this part where they have to have their own healing, and even though that was an experience that you needed to go through at the time, and it was an experience that she needed to go through to learn life's lessons, it still doesn't take away the pain that was caused. Because we we know that you know we know that everything that happens is not a coincidence. There's a reason for it. We can learn from it and and hopefully move move beyond that. But we still have that she that human aspect that she's 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 gonna feel and you're still here you're still here so um i mean that's jean can you explain it differently <laughs> well, I, I i'll give you my uh, my take on it um since you're correct in saying that, that we are um, there was an agreement made of who will be our family, who will be a part of our lives when we come into this existence, this human experience. And that's the key word right there. It is a human experience. So those individuals in our lives who have hurt us tremendously, who lived less than who they are is they yes are also on a journey of learning a lesson but i believe very much that we are given the opportunity to learn while we're still alive yeah and and it's a matter of if we choose to listen if we choose to move in a direction that we you know, that we're in, in order to elevate ourselves while we're human beings. Yes. So that Good when point. we go to the spirit world, we're not having to relive and see the movie of our lives and the people that we've hurt, you see. So mm -hmm. everything is a chain reaction. So the pain that your mother or your father dealt with while they were on this earth it started from somewhere and i love the fact that there's a book out right now uh oprah winfrey just put out and i forget who she uh co-wrote it with but the name of the book is called what happened to you what happened to you and it's about understanding like we can we can keep carrying the pain and the unforgiveness of the you know, against those who hurt us. But the lesson for us is to, especially those of us who are, who are elevating and who are in this work, is to see and ask that question, what happened to you? 
What was the trauma that took place in your life by someone else that caused you to think and do, react and be the way you were? You see, because we are to, we are to elevate while we're here, but not everybody gets it. And the redemption can be on the other side. And part of that redemption is to come back and say, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. I didn't get it. The many readings that I've had and the spirits that have come back to apologize to family members and say, I didn't get it then, but I get it now. I yeah. get it now. Yeah. Okay. And so it's about, it's about them healing as well as the sitter and, and how you heal, how long you forgive is up to you. Okay, that's your choice, but it's a process. And in order for us to elevate, we have to go through the process and release and forgive. Mm-hmm. That's my and, and part of that too is when we come here, we have choices, we have our free will. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, we can go this route or we can go this route. And part of it could be was OMG, when they get, we get to the spirit world and we see the choices that we made, when we came to the crossroad, we went left instead of right. And if we'd gone right, things would have been so much better. And so they see how they've made mistakes as well. And so it's part of that apology is, for, you know, asking for your forgiveness, but also forgiving themselves because you've made the wrong choice or you made a choice that was less desirable for, for all both. involved. I, I truly do have a better understanding. Thank okay, you. Okay, good. When, it, when in doubt, we go to Jean. It, it was both. Uh, recognizing um, a soul is separate from our human. I, I was kind yeah. of like just seeing it. We're just one. And so it didn't, you understand my confusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's an excellent question, though. Really, a really good question. Aja. Well, I was just going to add in, just from my viewpoint, um, in my training as a shaman, that you know, part one of the things that we do are the soul journeys to recover your original soul contract because. Um, you can you can live the life that you were intended, but as Kay is saying, free will has its elements. Also, other people's free will has its element. It's not set in stone. We are not living a, a predetermined existence. So we can travel on the same similar pathway, yet still diverge from it. And perhaps as we go through our life, that divergence causes it to grow further and further apart than you would have thought originally until, um, and that's part of the experience that we come here uh, to achieve. So we have the contract and now can we live up to it inside the human body? Because some people come into a diseased body. Perhaps they suffer from mental illness or bipolar disease and or they're manic and they're and then they have um, and they're inconsistent to their children or they're cruel or they're narcissistic. So they come into the disease body and sometimes we learn from them. I don't think we're always meant to know. I, I agree with that. Yeah, I don't. Not some always, things we are not, not meant a, to know. Yeah, sometimes we're not. And, um, and um, Monto put a comment that uh, a spirit communicator came through and offered an apology, but it wasn't accepted by the living. And that will happen too. And that's just part of the journey. So the spirit communicator is trying to make, do the amends, but the living is not ready to accept that. And so that's part of that journey that each of them have to go through in order to uh, move, move beyond it. 
Yeah, really good questions. Um, I yeah. did want to uh, address what Monto was talking um, was talking about earlier um, when he was uh, speaking about uh, getting guidance from somebody else's guide, and perhaps it was like a high level guide. I'm not really sure what your experience was, but um, I think it's always good for us to bear in mind that spirit speaks to us in the archetypes that we understand. And so it's not literal necessarily, but it's the wisdom of perhaps, because that's all part of one great big energetic frequency. So part of that energetic thing comes down and perhaps it's rec more recognizable to you in that way, because I think that's the important thing is we have to know how to recognize it. So hopefully spirit will speak in a language that we can understand, or at least we have, well, we have the ability to learn, <laughs> if I can yeah. say that. So that's, I just wanted to just kind of add that in there, if that yeah. makes any sense to you. Yeah, they will bring it, they will, they will communicate with you in a way that you do understand. <laughs> uh, I would like to add something. For example, yeah. I see that, for example, Kay has a guide from Indian America, for example. Yeah. And I don't have a guy from Indian American. So I try to blend with him in order to get information from him. Mm -hmm. So if he is open, mean that anyone can do this. If not, so um, he should come to us. If you are instead of us seeking him. This is this is the idea because like this anyone can be a good medium by just blending with the other mediums mediums guides. Um, but what's wrong with your guide? No, no, no. I'm not talking about myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking about the possibility the possibility of this. Yeah. So, for example, because I am dealing with one teacher, and mm -hmm. I'm using a technique, and he is using a different technique. Mm -hmm. And I asked them to join for rescue work. And he said that <clears throat> I have been doing this with someone for, for a long time. And uh, the guides, his guides and my guides are almost the same. And they are, they know each other and there's some blending. And I, I do like believe they, they do know each other. I do. And like if I'm working... Um, if I have students that I'm working with on a regular basis, I believe wholeheartedly that my guides know their guides and that they've been talking in the spirit world. They set up the union. I believe that wholeheartedly. Yes. That, um, but does that mean that I'm going to use your guides and work with them just because I want to? Mm -mm. I, I, I'm not. The only way I'm going to use your guides is if I'm giving you a reading and I need their assistance because, and I only use guides. I don't use guides for normal readings. I use guides for spiritual assessments. So that's the only way I would ever use your guide because your guide belongs to you. I've got my guide that knows me far, far better than your guide does. But if I'm working with you on a regular basis, yes, I think my guide is talking to your guide. Absolutely. All right. All right. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. They probably arranged it. They're, they're the, the, the bookies. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 I do believe that. I really do. <laughs> Thank you. But just a little bit more time, Brooke. Maybe I'm the only one, but I don't have a sense of a guide per se. I mean, mm -hmm. for me, it's all spirit as one huge thing. Now, I talk to my daughter all the time and ask her for help. I mean, she's in spirit. Um, you know, and I believe that we have guardian angels or, you know, but, but I have absolutely no sense. And when I've done these, you know, guided imageries and stuff, I don't get anywhere with them. I mean, you know, I, I, they just don't go okay. anywhere. 
for me. So I was just curious. Yeah. I had a friend that um, I remember once she said to me, I think I'm broken. (laughs) What do you mean you're broken? She goes, well, I don't see a guide. I don't know who my guides are. And she could connect with the spirit world. No problem at all. You know, was a phenomenal healer. But she had no idea who her guides were. And she goes, I think I'm broken. Why can't I, you know? Uh, that makes me feel better. Thank you. I haven't thought of myself as broken, but I thought. <laughs> it's just what she thought. But <laughs> she kind of was made to feel that way, I think. <laughs> but um, didn't, you're not broken. <laughs> I just, I kind of chuckled when she said that way. You're not broken. <laughs> it, it works. Whatever, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. She often would see colors when she worked. I, I have, I have, I used, before I got into mediumship, I, I have for decades yeah. had, had two colors and, appear. And, but it's simply, not, not guides. and yeah. simply all that was, that's, that's how her guide was showing himself to her as a, color, as, as an energy ball, a color. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, and they, they have that power that can show us they show themselves to us however they choose oftentimes it's what they think we need and for some strange reason maybe that's what she needed was just to see the color because she continued to come to circle she continued to work even though she couldn't see a guide when we would go, um, this was the first circle I ever sat in. Um, actually, the only circle I ever sat in. But no, it's not. That's the that's a first one. I sat in two different ones. But um, um, we would have to, we didn't sit in the power, but we would do guided meditations. And then everybody would tell what they saw. And it was always a journey with your guide. <laughs> she never had a story to tell. She was, yeah. I saw colors and that was it. And so she felt she was broken. I'd be right there with her. I mean, and, yeah. and, and when the colors appeared, they were all it, it, two big times in my life, three big times where it was really the worst times of my life. And, you know, this color would just appear, yeah. but I'd never thought about it. I didn't know what it was. I, I yeah. some, some level of me felt it was spirit of some sort because I believe spirit is all around us. Thank yeah. you. This is very helpful. Yeah. For me. I appreciate yeah. this. Yeah. Thank you. Lovely. Yeah, sorry, I cannot find the little hand. On That's the, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, it's just for, um, regarding what Brooke was saying. Um, I always felt I had uh, like a team blending with me and walking with me and living with me. And I never had the need to um, knew exactly who was a guide, who was an angel, who was a totem animal and so on, until um, a few times they just appeared to me, but like boom, right in my face, they wanted to make sure I would see them, identify them, recognize them. And it was for specific purpose. Some were helpers, some were, one of them is a main guide. I I think, I'm not even sure by then. And and it didn't make any difference. It, for that purpose that I needed them to, yes, but the rest of the time I still work with that circle, that bubble with me, Uh, but, the need to have something specific is not always uh, important. And, and I feel, uh, uh, the, the other part is a comment, I feel so uncomfortable when some people believe, oh, my guide name is this one, because uh, this um, clairvoyant lady told me so. So I said, how do you feel about it? Do you feel connected to a name like that? Or to, because uh, it could, it, can be very easy to yeah. say anything you want to people yeah. who are such in need. Yeah, we 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 all want to know who our guides are. And I remember when I first started um, 
the two ladies that ran the circle that I went to were phenomenal mediums. I mean, really, really good mediums. And I was always going to them for reading to tell me who my guides are. <laughs> so I would go for guide readings, not normal readings, guide readings. Give me a guide reading, you know, and Some of them, some of them, the guides that they, they did bring through my, my regular, my guide guide, they did bring him through. Uh, she actually, uh, one of them actually channeled him uh, through trance. And, um, but um, yeah. And I, you know, who knows, Brooke, why you're not seeing them? Is it, be, there, there's bound to be something there, a lesson there. Maybe it's trust. Just trust, you know, just trust us that we're here and carry on. And when, when it's time, if they choose to show themselves, they will. Thank you. I, I do trust. I mean, and it's, it's what's amusing to me is that I have brought in people, you know, images, because I'm so, I see so much stuff, so many things that I've been told, oh, no, you brought in my guide. I mean, because how I see what I'm thinking is as a person is is deceased, but the person, the other, the sitter uses as a guide. And, is, and, and never, never didn't even know in this lifetime, but I'll just, I'll get an image of a person that I think I'm bringing through, you know, one of the sitter's loved ones. And I'll describe the image that I'm seeing. And then in, in sometimes even a name and the, the sitter will say, oh, um, well, actually you've described my guide and that's how she appears to me. Huh. So, so I don't, I'm picking it up psychically or, you know, I have no idea. No, it could just mean that your crown chakra is wide open. Oh. When your crown chakra is wide open, you'll pick up on angels and guides and things like that. So when you, if you do the practice of opening your chakras, when you're, well, they're always open, <laughs> but open them wide um, before you work. Start at the base and move to the third eye and stop. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank we you. only go for medium ship. We only go to the third eye. But if you want to work with your guides or if you want to work with your angels or, or your sitters, guides, and angels, then you you can open up the crown chakra and you can get to a oh. higher plane. Thank you. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really good questions. Yes, Jean. Um, I wanted to go back to what Monto talked about, and you had mentioned about linking with you know other mediums. Um, you know, and, and some of the services that I've been in, in like church services, because we, you know, have people that will stand up and give prophetic words. It's like, it's not unusual um, that psychically, you know, someone may give a message to a person and then another person who picked up psychically will say something also or that they picked up. And so I know for myself, a lot of times, you know, I will get information about someone and, but then someone else will also get information about them, but there's a confirmation that comes within me that goes, yep, yep, mm -hmm. you know, that sounds right. So it's not unusual for that to happen uh, when you pick up one or two people will pick up uh, messages for that one person and not everybody sees or has been told the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well done. Mancho is now sitting on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> this is my guide. <laughs> Not only can he talk to the dead. <laughs> okay, good. All right. If uh, One more question, if anybody. Wendy. Um, mine wasn't a question. Just a, I just wanted to chime in quick for Brooke and say, that I often see my guide as a color. Um, I've seen him both ways and I actually have memories and have accessed it through hypnotherapy as well as meditation. 
as experiencing my guide as a color. But with that color, I also have specific emotions where it's a certain love that's unlike any other love. It's different than, you know, my husband or my parents. And the love for my God, like I could feel it, I could cry right now talking about it because that love, it's like so unconditional. So when I see that sure. color, I also feel that. So maybe when you see those colors, ask like, can I feel you? Because for me, that's been the most powerful way to know. But also with that, I um, go in and out of experiencing my guide. And since I started doing mediumship, like in the beginning, I felt like my guide was like all up in my business. Like I felt my guide all the time. And now I feel like for the past maybe six months, I feel like my guide is MIA. And um, until I just started talking right now. And I was like, oh, okay, I can kind of feel him. And so maybe too they they are closer to us when we need to see them more or whatever but yeah so i would say try to feel the color that's a good good suggestion because even if you just blend in with the color you should be able to pick up information about them fabulous it never occurred to me to blend with the colors and mm -hmm. you're absolutely, Wendy, you're, you put your finger on something too. They've, I've only had them appear. I mean, like right here in front of my third eye when I've been in, as I say, the three worst periods of my life. So I, I can, I mean, I, I know that color. So I, I will try that. Thank you very much. Never mm -hmm. occurred to me. Never yeah. occurred to me. Good. And that's why I like this group, because everybody has something important to say. And we all kind of contribute and keep each other on the right track. And that's that's why I, I, I love doing this group. And you guys bring such great questions anyway, but your input is invaluable. Like it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to raise a medium. <laughs> Honestly, really, truly, it does. <laughs> and we all bring in different perspectives. And that's important. Okay, so cool. All right, guys. Well, if if uh, that's it, we'll we'll wrap it up right there. And uh, okay. thank you. Have a good day, you guys. Okay, you too. Uh, good to see you all. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.